So in today's video, we're going to do the second part of creating endnodes. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of pseudo-authentication. So we got thinking about this term pseudo-authentication. And really, we don't recommend using this process for authenticating your users on the N8N side. There are much better ways of doing that, which will come up in later videos. Rather, think of this more as routing your messages based on queries that are coming in from the end user. Anyway, back to the video. And so what we'll do is we're gonna move the set node over. We're gonna add an if node in between the set node and the webhook itself. And so we'll just leave this blank for the moment. And then we'll come back here a little bit later to change it. So what we're gonna do is the set node here. We're gonna set that to the true output. And uh, we're just going to go into that set node now, and we will rename it to success. Now let's duplicate the success node, and uh, this will give us a second node here. And we will rename this one as well. And uh, surprise, surprise, we're going to call this one failed. And we'll drag the false output to the failed. So let's go back to the failed and make sure that it gives us a different message. So this time we're going to do message not received. And we'll just uh, close that up there. So now we have our success output and our failed output. But we've got to see what we're going to do with the webhook in order for us to determine what's going on. So we'll go into our JSON view here, and you'll notice at the bottom we've got the query ID N8N. So what we've done is we've passed the value of N8N through the webhook by adding a variable at the end of the webhook URL, where it's question mark ID equals N8N. And you'll notice that it won't run unless we execute the node. So we'll just execute that here. And when we run it, it says message received, and you'll notice that we're, we've got our ID N8N at the bottom. And that's how we get that ID N8N showing up. So we can now look at that information. We'll open up the if node now. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add a string condition into here. So we're going to make sure that the value is what's passed through from the webhook. So we're going to go to the current node, input, JSON, query because it was query information and the id which is what we had passed through and notice it says n8n and then for the value we're going to put n8n as well so what this is basically saying is this will be true if the value that comes in from the webhook is equal to n8n so let's execute the whole workflow and we will resend the information and there we go id equals n8n and we enter that in message received excellent and we can see that it goes from webhook to if to success. Now, let's change that ID equals n and n to something else. Let's say we call it, I don't know, maybe Bob. So we'll end that in there. And you'll notice it went to failed. And our, our output message is message not received. One of the things that we noticed once we finished the video is that we neglected to show you how to move this from test mode into production mode. To do that, open up the webhook and go into the webhook URLs and make sure that you have production set and you can start aiming at your production URL. You can copy that there, and you can use that over in your web client. The other thing you must then do is set your workflow to active. Hit yes, active and save. And now this will run in the background so that you don't have to keep the editor user interface open at all times, and it will just run. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching the video.